We are talking 1990s The Graveyard Chef. This is based on a Stephen King short story. For context, I have not read the Stephen King story. Now, reportedly, Stephen King does not like this adaptation, much like the Kubrick version of The Shining. But anyway, this one stars David Andros, Stephen Mack, to Brad Dourif and Andrew Divov. And basically tells a story of this old dilapidated textiles factory, which is very, very run down and infested with rats. The kind of, um, the story focuses on David Andrews' character, who is kind of a drifter who comes in and gets employed at this factory in the kind of the graveyard shift. Now, temperatures are very high, it's in the summer, so people work during the night to try and, you know, get in where it's slightly cooler. And it's a very run down kind of facility and there seems to be some type of rat problem, not just the kind of thousands of regular rats, but there seems to be a large mutant rat that seems to be killing the workers and anyone else who kind of gets in its way. What will happen? You will have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works with Graveyard Shift, not to be confused with the uh, 1986 vampire movie, also called Graveyard Shift, by the way. So... The thing I like best about this movie, there's two things that really stood out to me. One, Brad Dourif in this movie. He gives another expert monologue like he did. Maybe not quite as good as The Exorcist 3, but a pretty good uh, monologue about his experience in Vietnam dealing with the VC and, and rats. Uh, it's probably um, one of the best things in the film, I would say. Uh, Brad Dourif plays like a kind of exterminator who is hired to uh, obviously clean up the rat problem. He's not in it tons he's a supporting character but whenever he's on screen he's kind of always quite a fun character to, to enjoy and there's also uh the other stand out for me is the kind of the set decoration here uh this kind of this mill this kind of textiles factory wherever it's going to be it looks dilapidated it is a great set i mean you can't believe anyone would actually work here it looks like it should be condemned but it really looks like a death trap, just without even the rats, just the kind of the standard kind of working conditions. It just looks grimy, dirty, horrible, and not to mention it's obviously, as I say, taking the taking place in a kind of heat wave, so everyone is kind of sweaty and things like that. It's it's a character in term itself, really, the kind of the location here. Now we do see a practical kind of monster uh, towards the end of the movie. We're going to get glimpses here and there um, um, before that. And, you know, it's kind of like a bit of a rubbery kind of, uh, you know, practical effect. But, you know, it's a 1990 film. It kind of looks more like a bat because it has these kind of wings. And it, it reminds me a little bit, in, in a way, of the winged devourers from Beastmaster. The way it kind of encompasses its victims and things. But I kind of still quite liked it, actually. It looked pretty threatening, uh, to be honest with you. And like I said, having it in this kind of uh, um, dilapidated factory in its lair... Uh, which is kind of underneath this graveyard. So what doesn't work in this movie? I have to say the acting is a mixed bag. I really like Brad Dourif's character. There's a couple of other ones that I feel are, you know, pretty good. But uh, David Andrews as our main character isn't necessarily bad, but he's just very, very bland. It's partly down to the way his character is written. He has no defining character traits really outside of being a kind of man of the people and everything but he seems quite kind of like generic to be honest on the flip side you've got Stephen max character who is the the boss and he just seems like way over the top kind of crazy and massively overacted by mac other characters we just don't really get anything there's no real kind of fleshing them out i don't really understand for example why the workers seem to pick on David Andrews character there seems to be no real reason for it he's just this new guy that kind of turns up and there's a few kind of things that happen that just seem a little bit kind of silly like they're in a diner and one of the workers just happens to have a dead rat on him and puts it on his plate and things like this it's just like what what's going on here the movie also is a little bit meandering I, I feel the story is a little bit kind of stretched out here a bit it obviously based on a kind of a short story it's, it tends to kind of spin its wheels. I mean, we were kind of like over the halfway point. I think I don't really feel like the story's really kind of got going yet. It seems to be kind of just, you know, going at a little bit of a kind of a, a slow pace here. It's not exactly a slow burn film, you know, because it's not a huge runtime or anything. But you just don't feel there's like a, a massive 
plot progression really, purely because ultimately there's not a huge amount of story here to be honest. There are a couple of like sillier decisions that are kind of made by the kind of the filmmakers as the kind of the film goes on. Um, things that don't quite really make sense. The kind of the, um, I mean, you, it, the film's quite dark as well. The cinematography is a little dark at times. You, you might forgive that because obviously it's going to be taking place during the night and we kind of need to see what's kind of going on at times. But, you know, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Where, the way they shoot the creature as well, we generally only kind of see parts of it at any one time. So it's difficult to quite see what's kind of going on. Sometimes the frame's a little kind of off here and there. Um, it's obviously be a little bit of a shallow film. It's not a bad you know, creature feature if you just want kind of like gooey effects. And it is quite gory at times. And there's one bit where a guy gets his arm ripped off and then we just see like meat chunks fly all over the place. And it's, that's pretty good. Uh, but ultimately it's, it's a very kind of sparse movie in regards to plot. Some of the character kind of like motivations and kind of like uh, the, just the, the way they act just seem illogical and kind of undeveloped. So overall, it's kind of an okay kind of time waster, really, but it doesn't really feel like it's got a huge amount of meat on the bones. So, you know, it's, it ends up being okay, which is what I'll give it a 5 out of 10. It's an average kind of creature feature movie that I think was straight to kind of, uh, you know, video in the, in the kind of 1990 when this came out. But it's nothing um, outstanding. Maybe it's not as, as terrible as Stephen King makes out, but it's, it's certainly... Uh, not one of the more memorable uh, King adaptations. Have you seen it? What do you think of it? Leave me comments and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.